Hello and welcome to this demo on how to use incident management with OKRS and Niagara's integration. So first I'd like to do a quick overview of ITSM process, very basics without any details. Then uh, there'll be an overview of Nagios, what we can do for monitoring and finally how OKRS helps in incident management. The focus of the demo is going to be how we can integrate Nagios to OKRS for incident management. When we talk of ITSM, there are multiple aspects of ITSM. What I'm showing here is a very small subset. Essentially, I just wanted to focus on how you would have a 24 by 7 knock, which would look at incidents. You need a way to capture those incidents using an incident management tool. That's one of the functions of ITSM. The ITSM tool also needs to have a linkage to CMDB, change management, SLA management. And also, there is the parallel flow of your service desk and service request management, which will also be part of your ITSM. Now, what we have done here is we have set up Nagios to do monitoring. And as we know, Nagios is a popular tool for doing end-to-end -end IT infra monitoring. This covers servers, application DB, and network devices. We'll be creating alerts using Nagios. And also, escalation metrics can be built in Nagios as needed as per business logic. The second tool in the demo is OTRS. This is an ITSM tool, which is basically a complete ITSM open source tool where you can do with help incident management, help desk, CMDB, knowledge management, change management, and, and other features. So essentially, the focus of this demo that I wanted to show was how we can do monitoring of our IT infra using Nagios at SAI. And then the alerts would be used to generate your incidents within OTRS automatically. There will also be a linkage to your CMDB, and you can also specify SLA and make sure the, that your response team is responding as per SLA. So with that, let me switch over to the tool. So I need to open the browser real quick. So what I'm showing here is essentially your uh, Nagios product. So this is how it looks. When you log in, you get the tactical overview. Let's focus on your alerts. So let me pick up your latest alert screen. So what the screen shows is the alerts being generated by Nagios. We have set up monitoring for servers, databases, MSQL, and uh, different types of servers, basically, as well as network devices. So what we've done is we have picked a few examples, which will go and send an alert to the OTRS system. So let's look uh, as an example, this server called Sapson Line. And the process we're talking about is memory usage. Is an example so what you've done is whenever there's an alert on this the Nagio system is going to send an email alert to uh, OTRS so that is the first part of the flow now what happens when this particular email hits the OTRS system so let's log into OTRS and this is how the dashboard looks like so essentially what happens is through the integration there is going to be an incident ticket created in OTRS and this corresponds to your alert here which is this alert so essentially that's how the ticket is being created so let's click through and open the ticket the second thing you're going to see is whenever there are changes happening inside of OTRS meaning there's a flapping or there's a change in the status whether whenever there is a service which is becoming critical and then returning to normal all of them are automatically going to be rolled into one single ticket. So this is a neat feature which is part of integration. This avoids a situation where OTRS is creating multiple incidents for the same alert being generated from Nagios XI. But at the same time, it does capture the alerts come in as versions. So this is basically the version history. So when you scroll down, you see the description of the problem. You do see Nagios XI, this type of the problem. This is the name of the server IP address, the host, and the current state that it is in, along with information that is being passed from Nagios to OTRS. Now, this information that is being passed is uh, you know, customizable. You can configure it. You can add more info. That requires some backend coding and changes. But actually, here we have done the basics, where all the relevant information about the IT asset is being passed on to OTRS. So once that is done. There's also a uh, SLA being assigned. So there's a first response time and a solution time. And in this case, uh, it's negative, which means that actually the 
SLA times have elapsed and this ticket has not been attended to within the specified SLAs and you validated the SLA on this. So this also gives you a way to specify the SLA metrics and a way to measure whether your support team is responding within your specific SLA. So the ticket was assigned to the owner called admin who has not responded and that's why this has got an alert escalation. Okay, the other thing I wanted to point out was the automatic linkage to a CMDB. So what you've done is, here's a linkage which is done automatically. But before we do that, I wanted to show you the CMDB. So under the CMDB, we have entered servers. We created servers and made entries for a lot of the servers which are being monitored in Azure Sci. So the server of interest is your server which is called as SAP Sunlight. If I click here, these are the details of the server. So it gives you the information about the model manufacturer, the RAM, hard disk, IP address and so on. So this is the CMDB entry that was made earlier. Now what happens is as part of the integration between ODRS and Nagios, there are two things that work. First, let me go back to the incident, which is this particular incident. Here you are storing a link to the CMDB automatically. So you know that this particular incident is related to this particular server. That's the first useful information. The second useful information is if you go back to the CMDB and click on this server, which is your SAPS and Live, you see that it is giving a list of issues or incidents being seen on the same server. So in this case, there are about 235, 235 such incidents which are being reported or linked to this particular server. This is useful information when you are doing capacity planning or change management. So you want to make sure that you reduce the number of incidents. So you want to know what server are giving you most of the problems. So here there's a list of all the incidents that are being created or generated by this particular server. And this list is coming automatically using the integration between IOS and ATS. So this very, very useful piece of information which can be used for making further decisions on whether you want to treat this as a problem and make it part of your problem management flow or whether you want to consider this as part of change management where you want to keep upgrading the IT asset in terms of maybe the memory or the hardware so that there are less number of incidents on this particular IT. So this is a very quick short demo that I want to show back to our PKD. So that's all we have for this demo. Thanks a lot and visit our website alplace.com.